Hi everyone, it's Catherine from Bugling Embroidery Designs here. Today I want to show you how to make the Blessed Beyond Measure measuring tape holder. It is very easy to make, it's lots of fun, it'll make a great gift for almost um, anyone who, whether they sew or uh, embroider, quilters, uh, or just anyone in general, because um, who doesn't need a tape measure? Um, so they they have two two parts to them. There is the mini bug band, and then there's the actual pocket holder. And you can open them up. And then you have the cute little tape measure, and then it has the retractable. Woo! Okay, um, you can get these most anywhere. Uh, I got this one at Hobby Lobby. Almost missed them. Well, actually, I did miss them, so I ended up asking them, like, I know you guys have these somewhere, and they ended up being in the Sewing Notions area, but they were in, like, a jar sitting at the bottom of the the whole shelving unit in the Sewing Notions area, and they even had a lid on them, so it didn't look like anything, but then you open it up, and these were in there, and they were, like, 99 cents each. So they're really cute. Um, and always buy extra because uh, sometimes I've noticed that this part falls off. But uh, yeah, you know what? We should figure out how we could fix that. You know, I always think of things, so I'll have to look into that. But anyway, this one's working great. Um, out of all the ones I bought, I had one that the tab fell off. Okay, so you just stick them in the pocket and can snap it shut put them on your keys or your purse so you always have them I could have really used one of these uh, with me yesterday when I was out at the hardware store trying to make my little uh, do-it-yourself uh, paint spinning uh, turntable so anyway okay without further ado let's get started what I've done so far is when I unzip my file there are a series of two different files inside. Um, I'm gonna start with the mini bug band and the bug bands are very simple to make. Just um, keep in mind that the very last two steps you wanna use the same color and only add your back fabric before the last step. So let's get started on that one. I have loaded the design to my machine. I hooped a sheet of tearaway stabilizer, nice and tight, sounds like a drum. Um, I did, for demonstration purposes, run the placement stitch onto my stabilizer. Normally when I do bug bands like this one, I would have picked the 4x4 multi out of my files and I would have um, ran all four, sk skipping the placement stitch and just covered my entire hoop, which saves a little bit of thread and also fabric in the end. So anyway, um, this was the first step. I ran it onto my stabilizer. Now I need to cover that with some sort of fabric. You can use reinforced cotton, uh, whatever you like. For this one here, I'm going to use a little scrap of, uh, let's see. I have some scrap pieces of Glitter mirror canvas vinyl. This is, one is white. I'm going to look and see how much room I have. Okay, I think I'm gonna just put it this way to be on the safe side. And I'll cut a little bit of that off. I love keeping my scraps because they come in handy for lots of projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover that. Uh, you could use a little spray adhesive if you wanted, or a piece of tape, or um, just watch your machine go. So I covered it, and I'm just gonna go ahead and run step number two, which is the word blessed. I'm gonna go ahead and let that run. It only takes, um, hello machine. Okay, I guess I didn't push it right. <laughs> It only takes a minute to run, so I'm um, going to still save you that minute and pause this. Okay, it's just finishing the word blessed, 
And now we're going to do, if you look at my little sample, on the top and bottom there are two little stitches that you don't see on the back. So that's how you know you need to make sure that those stitches are going to be the same color as the other stitches. So we're going to go ahead and run that. Um, I chose pink, so I'm going to have it do the two openings to the mini Bugaband right now. And then after it's done doing that, we're going to go ahead and let's see if you can zoom in. Don't zoom in on me. I don't have any makeup on today except for some lip scents. Okay. So at this point, we have the word blessed along with the two openings. So the back side is still our stabilizer. We're just going to cover that with another piece of scrap. Um, you want to make sure that the right side of the vinyl is facing outward so it looks good from this side and it'll look good from the front. So that's how you know. You want to have wrong sides together, right sides facing out of whatever you're using. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just putting a little tape down just to hold it a little bit. Um, this is just pink masking tape, nothing fancy. In fact, it's kind of losing its stickiness. I need to find something else. Okay, so I'm gonna let it stitch the remainder of the final outline on the mini bugger band. And I will be right back. Okay, so the word blessed finished. And as you can see, the front, the outline goes all the way around on the back there is an opening and that's going to be where we're going to slide that onto the tab of our pocket strap for the pocket snap tab. Okay, so I'm setting that aside. I've loaded the second design in the zip file and this is the actual pocket snap tab. Now, same thing, stabilizer hoop nice and tight. I ran my placement stitch right onto my stabilizer, which is important for this part because you really need to line up your pocket. So in this case, you want to take a piece of vinyl or fabric of your choice and lay that over the pocket area. I usually just try to line it up as best I can and then move it upward just a little bit. I'm so technical, aren't I? I move it up just a little bit. I don't know, what would that be like? A sixteenth of an inch? An eighth of an inch? I, I'm terrible with that kind of stuff. But if you can look, I lay down the vinyl and the, um, the lines right there. Actually, I normally go down a little more, but so this pocket will have an extra little bit. Okay, so that's what I get for trying to hold it and do it. Okay, so the next step is going to draw the line across the top of our pocket along with a little circle right here which will be where we put our snap in. So that's what's going to stitch next. So I like to match the color of whatever color I use for the top of the pocket to the final outline. That's just my personal preference. You can use whatever colors you like. I feel like it just kind of ties in the design. So that's why I do it that way. Okay. It is doing the top of the pocket and then it you're just finished the top of the pocket and now it's going to work on the circle. After the circle it's going to go start doing the wording of the wording and decoration for the pocket. Okay, come on, focus in camera. 
next is the the decorative stitching and the wording okay I think it's focusing now okay so I'm gonna go ahead and let it run the decorative stitching and the wording and then I'm gonna come back to talk to you in a second okay not sure my camcorder just turned off I don't know where we were when it cut off so just in case I am going to say that um, we stitched the pocket um, and then I did Catherine's crazy cutting cutting out the upper part and then I'm trimming up my pocket a little bit because I left too much room for my personal preference so that's what I'm doing okay so the next step is to take two pieces of vinyl you're going to turn it over and you know this is the bottom of your design so just lay oops lay the first piece face down a little under that going to the top and then the second piece you want face up so the first one face down against your hoop second one face up so you're going to have a nice finished back of your design. Now, what some people like to do is, I'm going to zoom out a little. Okay, what some people like to do at this point is take a little piece of scotch tape and lay it here and here. So then that way when your machine goes over the hump of the pocket, um, it helps ease it over that uh, my machines don't seem to have problems with it but some do um, so just a little piece of scotch tape there and there or you can look in your manual for your machine some machines you can actually raise your presser foot um, you should be okay though so I am going to go ahead and put this in and I'm going to run the final stitching around the design then after the final stitching around the design, I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to meet you over at my work table. So, right back. Okay, we are over at my little work table now and I just pulled both my hoops out of my machine. Um, note, I did use a 4x4 four four for the little blast and I used a 5x7 for this one. I'm working on redesigning the whole design to sell it as a separate file that will work with uh, four by four hoops but right now this one does require a five by seven hoop so depending on when you actually watch this video there'll probably be a four by four version out and I'll probably make a new video for that if the steps are different I'm still in the um, design stage so I don't have anything definitive yet um, I'm just going ahead and popping my designs out of my hoops. I'm going to just do a little bit of quick rough cutting around to get rid of the bulk from my designs. Get that out of the way. Some people like to take and try to pick out their stabilizer as much as they can oh that's right it's between these layers so they like try to do this I I don't feel it's necessary um, but you can definitely do that it's personal preference uh, tweezers works well with doing it that way okay so getting that out of my way I am going to grab my fussy cutting scissors and I like to just cut around my designs pretending there is uh, an imaginary line around them. Okay, see how I have that started? There's a nice line around it. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera for a few minutes while I cut these out. So to save you some viewing time. I actually decided to bring you back before I finish cutting out this one. I did do the first one. Um, I finished 
uh, trim, cutting out this, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I finished cutting out this one, but then before I finish this one, I wanted to show you after you cut around this tab, sometimes it's easier to pull this down and either tape it or just hold it with your hand while you go back up the other side. I had to pause to look at the camera to make sure you guys could see me. And then I lost my placing. Whoever said doing YouTube video tutorials is easy, they're crazy because I am such a nervous wreck. I keep messing up. Okay. Now looking at my color choices, I probably, what I should have done is use some sort of white to tie in this piece but oh well um yeah because this one looks cuter to me i don't know i was trying to be uh crafty there but uh i think it was a fail <laughs> okay so at this point what we want to do is make some holes for some snaps um for this tab you're going to go from the back to the front Oh, see, I missed some little trim in here. My machine cuts, or cuts jump stitches and ties them off, so I get little extra knots and stuff, so I usually just trim those off. Um, okay, and then same thing for the pocket. You can lift up the pocket, look at that placement stitch, and poke a hole from the back to the front. And then if you're going to use, um, these are cam snaps. These are size 20 standard cam snaps. You're going to need two snaps, a stud, and a socket. So there's four pieces to every uh, snap. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see better. All right, here we go. Oh, wrong way. This way. Okay. So you have two snaps, a socket, and a stud. So you can see the socket and stud are a little bit different from each other. One has to go into the other. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. All right, we'll go back out a little. All right, so next I am going to take a snap. I'm going to pull up the pocket and I'm just going to insert it into that hole from the back to the front so now it's sticking out and I'm just going to go ahead and take I'm going to use the socket here and then I'm going to grab my cam pliers and make sure you guys can see I'm going to put the snap into the bottom part of my pliers where the black thing is and then just give it a little squeeze and that squeeze down the snap to make it secure on the pocket. Okay, same thing for here. We're going to insert it from the back to the front. And then this one, I'm going to use my little stud. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to insert my players, putting the snap into the black stud on there give it a little squeeze and now that snaps now looking at my um my little flap here i had black uh bobbin thread in shouldn't matter too much because once you put the the blessed mini bug band on there it covers most of that area but you could run yourself a bobbin of whatever color you're using for your final outline and use that and then it would just be all pink or all black or whatever color you're using um or if you're using white then just use white bobbin thread but oops um i just wanted to point that out it doesn't really matter because it's going to be covered most of it anyway okay now on the next part if I was going to use snaps, I would do the exact same thing and I would poke a hole here and I would poke a hole here, but I would put my snaps in from the front to the back. And because on this one, you're going to want it to go forward. So 
but I am actually really into using rivets for that part right now so I'm going to go ahead and use a rivet so in a, for using rivets I put my little swivel lobster clasp on first um, this is the D ring style with a 3 fourths inch opening across the bottom and I find they fit my designs very well it just depends on how um, how closely you cut to your stitching. Um, I like to cut this close so it's not too close, not too far. To me it's like just right. So I like to do that and then I usually take a leather punch and I just punch myself a little hole wherever I want to put my rivet. So if you can see, I'm just punched my little hole, a little crooked, but hey, it's still going to work fine. Okay. And then I like to put, um, oh, actually it looks pretty perfect. I put my nine millimeter stud in. I like to go from the front to the back. I've just been doing this so I get in the habit of which way I need to put my, um, rivet into my press machine okay and then I grabbed a little cap of my nine millimeter cap these are the nine millimeter double end uh, rivets so now I know that I now that I know that I always do front to back I put the front down because the long side needs to go to the bottom one and I just put that in there and then I just have to give it a gentle pull um, and it ugh, makes them so secure you can pull and pull all day long and I know I'm not gonna lose this I'm not it's not gonna fall okay once we have the design all cut out and ready um, we need to slip on our mini bugger band so just take a look which way you're going to want it to end up so then I just flip it up and I insert the tip of my snap closure into the opening of the bug band I like to use the area between the back fabric and the stabilizer and then you can just use something to push it through um, and all probably is not the best choice you'd probably be better off using like a tweezers or something because I could have just poked myself but anyway it just slides right in there and then I like to bring mine up close to the snap so mine is like right about there and then just insert a measuring tape and give it a little snap and there you go it's blessed Oops blessed beyond measure and you don't even have to take it out to use it you can just use it and snip and um, squeeze here and it works great um, how easy was that seriously um, these and all my other designs are very easy to make I try to design everything so it stitches very simply um, I'm all about quick stitch. Uh, I like to make a lot of everything. So, and then, you know, you don't want to be spending forever at the machine. So anyway, um, here it is. It's all done. It's super cute. Uh, I hope you like it. Here's a little bit of a close-up. Don't mind my color choices. I probably should have picked some different colors, but <laughs> um, this is what I picked for today. So anyway, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact myself or one of my other volunteers uh, at www.buglina.com. There's a contact form. There is a live chat window. Uh, the Buglina Facebook group is a great place to get help if you need it as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, I wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on Facebook soon.